Prayer. What comes to mind when you hear this word? For many, it evokes images of clasped hands, bowed heads, and spoken words. But what if I told you the prayer, ancient, deeply spiritual prayer, is something far more profound than words spoken and the ritual of bowing your head? For many that have left Christianity, prayer can feel like a lost connection, a longing to speak to something greater while feeling abandoned, guilty, or even unworthy. What if I told you that true prayer was never meant to beg and hope an external God would help you? The ancient paradigm that we call prayer when religious is the key to unlocking your true potential, giving you the power to align with the energy of the universe and manifest the life you've always desired. Today, I'm going to show you how prayer, when grounded in its ancient roots of comedic spiritual science, becomes a daily practical tool that impacts you on all levels, physically, mentally, and at the soul level. If you're seeking deeper spiritual connection, or if you're in the process of deconstructing from a traditional Christian dogmatic religious system, this understanding can change everything. By the end of this video, you'll not only see prayer in a completely new and empowering light, but you'll also learn how to use it to elevate your energy, align with your true purpose, and attract the transformation you've been seeking. Section 1. The Origin of Prayer as Vibration Long before Christianity, ancient civilizations like the Egyptians didn't have the concept of asking an external God for something. In modern religion, we're often taught to pray by asking for help for something outside ourselves. But ancient comedic teachings reveal something much deeper. Prayer was about a vibration. This is a shift in thinking, a different paradigm. Instead of begging God, they turned their frequency to align with the vibration of the universe, bringing themselves in harmony with what they desired, whether it was healing, peace, or abundance. In their view, we're the source in human form, so there's no external force we need to beg. A key part of this philosophy was Ma'at. More than just a concept of truth or justice, Ma'at represented the universal law of reciprocity. What you put out, is what you get back. This principle is the foundation of many spiritual and religious systems we see today. You've probably heard the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, or the scripture, Luke chapter 6, verse 38, give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, will be poured into your lap. For the measure you use, it will be measured to you. These are both about ma'at and reciprocity. You'll often hear terms like truth, balance, and justice associated with ma'at. But each of these words are a frame for profound universal laws. The ancient Egyptians understood that everything, our thoughts, emotions, and words, carries a vibrational frequency. In comedic traditions, sound was considered the organizing principle of everything in the universe. As stated in the ancient Egyptian Book of the Dead, Ra said, I am Ra, I am the Eternal, I am the Word, I created the Word. The Word, or Logos, is a metaphor. What has to happen in order for you to utter a word? Answer, your vocal cords have to vibrate. They knew the power of sound to create. This belief in the power of vibration helped them harmonize with the universe, bringing forth clarity, healing, and inner peace. This ancient understanding of prayer as a vibrational practice is what has been lost in modern religion. But it holds the key to unlocking deeper spiritual truths, power, and peace. Section 2. The Science of Vibration and Sound Modern science has finally caught up with this ancient wisdom. We now know that everything in the universe vibrates at a frequency, from the chair you're sitting on to the thoughts running through your mind. Sound is one of the purest expressions of vibration, and when you meditate, chant, or even frequency tune, you align your vibration with the energy of creation and your intention. Think of it like tuning a radio dial. You adjust the dial until you find the frequency that resonates with you. In the same way, through frequency tuning, you align your energy with what you want to manifest in your life. Here's something powerful to consider. If you can imagine something, it already exists. 
The only difference between you and that experience is matching its frequency. When you do, it has to manifest. Whether it's healing, peace, or abundance, the key is shifting your frequency. Since the word prayer often carries certain associations and energy, let's shift to the concept of frequency tuning to better align with the ancient process of manifesting your desires. Section 3. Ancient Practices of Vibrational Prayer In ancient Egypt, sounds like Atum and Amen were more than just words. They were viewed as the building blocks of the universe. They understood that sound itself could create form. Ptah, known as the master craftsman, was said to be the foundation of the physical universe. Whether it was a planet, a tree, or even a thought, sound creates form. The ancient Egyptians didn't pray in the way we think of today. Instead, they invoked divine energy through sound and vibration. If you've ever felt the chills from music that moves you, you've experienced the power of vibration. In that moment, you're being merged with the sound and you felt it on a cellular level throughout your body. The truth is, you don't even need to speak a word. Frequency tuning is about aligning with the creative forces of the universe, not just speaking. It's about resonating with what you desire. Section 4. Moving Beyond the Religious Paradigm If you're deconstructing from a traditional religious system, this shift might feel both liberating and challenging. We've been taught to think of prayer as asking for help from something outside ourselves. It makes you feel powerless and dependent on external interventions. But the ancient comedic teachings show us that we are co-creators with the universe. Prayer isn't about asking, it's about aligning. This is a powerful shift in understanding that allows you to reclaim your power. Instead of asking for what you need, you align your vibration with what you desire, whether it's healing, peace, or transformation. Frequency tuning becomes less about pleading and more about stepping into your power as a creator. Practical Tips Using Vibration in Your Practice Let's get practical now. How can you incorporate frequency tuning into your life? It's actually a very simple process. Here's three steps to help you connect with the ancient practice. Number one, check in with your emotions. Your emotions are a powerful cue to your frequency. If you feel good, you're aligned with your soul's purpose and the universe. If you feel bad, you're out of alignment, creating a vibrational dissonance. It's that simple. Don't make it complicated. Now, through indoctrination, we're told that suffering and obligation are the key. In truth, they are the opposite of what you desire. Shake that indoctrination off and choose to feel good as often as possible. Number two, focus on intention, not words. It's not about saying the right thing. It's about the energy and feeling behind what you say or think. Are you seeking peace, healing, or abundance? The universe responds to your energy, not just your words. Remember Ma'at's law of reciprocity. What you put out is what you get back. Number three, breathe and align. Deep breathing helps align your frequency. As you breathe in, imagine drawing in universal energy. As you breathe out, release anything blocking you from that energy. Over time, this practice will help you shift into resonance with what you desire. Do the deep breaths to settle your mind and energy. Slowly breathe in and then exhale. Do this three times. Now this is just a tip of the iceberg when it comes to this powerful metaphysical knowledge. But it's a great start to help you shift and understand frequency tuning. It's time to shift from thinking you need to pray to something outside yourself to realizing that you need to align your frequency. Prayer, as we've been taught, is often limited by words and dogma. It has very little practical application except to hope it can be answered by Sky Daddy. But if you can step beyond that and tap into the ancient understanding of frequency tuning, you'll discover a new way to connect with the universe, your higher self, and your purpose. Through monitoring your emotions, it has practical and useful applications because it causes you to tune into and be aware of your inner state. 
Whether you're deconstructing from a belief system or seeking a deeper spiritual connection, this shift can transform how you meditate, tune in, and live. Recognize this truth because you're the universe in human form, the words made flesh, a vibrational being. You're always tuning into the universe. Who do you pray to now that you don't believe? You're literally a living prayer every second of every day. You're always connected and communicating with the universe. Tune in. That's an empowering shift. The next time you sit in silence or chant a mantra, remember, you're not just speaking to something outside yourself. You're aligning with the very heartbeat of the universe. If you're ready to explore more about how to align your inner vibration with the universe and step into your power as a co-creator, Check out my Cometaphysics course at www.cometaphysics.com. It's a master class for shifting your consciousness and transforming your life. It's a journey that will deepen your understanding of ancient wisdom and guide you toward true spiritual empowerment. Thank you for watching. If this video resonates with you, consider subscribing to join our growing community on this journey of rediscovery and enlightenment. Your support helps us reach our goal of 100,000 subscribers. But more importantly, by sharing this video, you can spread these empowering insights to others who need them. Together, let's bring this ancient wisdom to light and inspire a positive shift in the world.